So what we have been doing um, the last class was was to relate the differential cross section which is an experimentally observed quantity to some quantity which we know which we can obtain theoretically and that is what we have called it as f k comma k prime. So, this is the theoretically derived fine ok. So, now now what is quite ok. So, now what we are going to do is so to even this so the only approximation we did here was assumptions there are two assumptions um, one is basically localization of the potential what is the second uh, the detector yeah the distance uh, detector detector is far ok. So, so there this has helps in two things one is basically we only take we only took the 1 by r square terms hmm, 1 by r cube etcetera were deemed irrelevant this also said that x is far far greater than x prime no fine ok. So, now um, so even this expression which we have derived is not going to be very useful ok. First let us do the following so I will make we will make a following assumption ok. So, now we will take the specific cases ok and now what we are going to make we make assumption or we make an approximation ok. So, what we say is that and this is what usually we do right now and then we will proceed with higher order effects. So, what we are going to make an approximation is that the incident energy of the particle let us call it as E incident is much much greater than the potential ok. So, this is an approximation we are going to say so this is an assumption which we have made ok. Okay. So, now we are going to make the following approximation which basically says that the incident energy of the of particles is much much higher than V ok. Um, so, so this is very similar. So, we are going to consider the case which I am going to consider is basically very similar to the case in 1 D. So, in 1 D you would have done this case you will have some amount of transmission and quite a lot of reflection fine. So, this one is mod t squared is far far less than mod r squared basically ok. So, this is when the tunneling happens. Now, you can also look at the case ok. Now, here as well there is some amount of which actually gets reflected and it is transmitted. So, here mod t square is far far greater than mod r square ok. Now, this is uh, it is not very well discussed in most of the books. So, this is called over the barrier reflection. So, this is what is usually discussed which is tunneling the only book which I know very well which discusses is Landau and Lipschitz volume 3. So, I am not going to discuss this, but you can just have a look at that later ok. So, what we are going to look at is a case where which is basically incident energy is far far greater than the potential. So, this is the potential barrier here this is V 0 let us call it 
and this is the energy of the particle. Okay, so what is going to happen? So when we make this assumption, so there are two things which is going to be useful. First is going to be that since the energy is very large, so out the particles which you see in the detector will be approximately same as the incident. That's number one. The number two is so which also means that phi vector will be approximately equal to the psi vector. K or K prime. This is I. This is phi. So what we are going to say is that the incident energy is so large compared to the potential uh, potential, which is the barrier. So outgoing is always going to be plane waves here also it's going to be plane waves but it is going to be almost approximately same as the outgoing energy okay so the wave function is going to be very similar and the wave vector is going to be very similar that's basically what the assumption we are okay 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 so now let us just look at what happens to the f so what we got f was k comma k prime So this was xi, so I am going to replace xi with phi okay, and I am going to replace it with some k. So, so now I can do a Fourier transform, so I will have a f of k comma k prime. So I'm going to redefine this as some q. Okay, so I'm going to define q vector with some k minus k prime. So this tells you how much of momentum is being transferred. write down the expression and it will be clear what I am actually going down. So except the prefactor, let us forget about the prefactor. So the amplitude The differential cross section amplitude is actually a Fourier transform of the potential. Q is basically some momentum transfer, which is basically momentum. So, a Q dot x. Okay, so so uh, so this is what this expression which I have derived is what is it is commonly referred to as first born approximation or born approximation. Call the first bond, but it does not matter, so I will just call it as bond approximation right now. Okay. So, once you know what is the potential three dimensional potential, then we should be able to take a Fourier transform and then we should be able to obtain f of k, comma k prime that is basically what we are actually interested in. 
this was also can be written as q okay so now i'll write it as q because q is this that's fine okay so so there are there are two things which i wanted to um, mention so the assumptions are are important okay based on these assumptions these are very general assumptions which we have made okay but the approximation is it has to be refined okay this is always the case in physics so you make an assumption a paradigm in which things will work okay then you start worrying about what kind of approximation we can still use on it and then go about so this is the the reason why it's called the first approximation approximation is that you can start refining how does it work order by order okay so this is the first order in the expression as as we mentioned the other day the lippmann schinger you can also go for infinite order so you can take order by order terms then this will be a second order second bond approximation third bond approximation keep doing it okay so now before we do all those stuff let us just take a simple case and then figure it out what happens okay so we are now so so now we are going to focus on some um, general case of scattering by central force central so v of x is basically v of r okay theta and phi will actually go okay now the bond approximation becomes slightly simplified okay so so what happens so f of q that's fine so what happens to q r x so let us call it as q r so this will be some q r cos theta that's okay okay so so what will i get so i'll have a 2 pi from phi hi that should be okay so final expression will be integral over on by now q no let me just okay please remember q goes there is a q which actually is here which is 1 over q okay okay that will come back to it when we actually do the calculation will be able to understand fine so the bond approximation is valid for uh, doesn't matter whether it worries about the spherical symmetry but we are going to worry about the spherical symmetry for some time okay and let's see what happens so now let us make take the case 1 v of r is v0 for r less than r is equal to 0 for r greater than r so what we are going to look at it is basically like what we did in the 1d case it's a potential from if this is a radial axis the potential is v0 from 0 to r and then after that it is actually zero fine okay so please substitute for v of r and calculate what happens to f of q the assumption 1 the assumption 1 and assumption 2 combined actually if you don't have a localized potential then you cannot make an assumption that x prime x is far far greater than x prime and x prime if you remember is an integration over 
if a dx prime there is a Green's function g of x comma x prime some v of x prime xi of x prime forget about the prefactors okay so this integration if i so there are two there are lots of problems without 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 if i have a very low non local potential then even the plane waves will not be actually valid f1 of q v0 by q r squared so you would have got something like sin qr minus qr qr now uh, i don't know i don't think so most of you will remember it this is nothing but a spherical bessel function of so I, I don't even so i only wrote this so you don't have to remember this uh, so this is what is called the spherical bessel function of order 1 mod okay so i'm just going to write down the final expression spherical bessel function of the first kind actually okay. of the first kind j1 like this is very similar to j it's a it's like a j but divided by some some factor into r okay so that is uh, you generally get it when you do when you are solving uh, spherical potentials so so that is the reason why it's called a spherical bessel function okay so now we are going to take two cases which i which i want to stick to it one is a case where in the low energy case I want to take th these two limits you will figure it out in a minute what happens so since people do not know the spherical bessel function approximation so I will just write down the final expressions for both of it please check it in Mathematica. I am taking d sigma by d omega so I have to take a square. It is 1 by 9 yes so here it goes as 1 by q to the power of 4 here it goes as 1 by q squared leading order I am talking about so let us just uh, look at whether under what limit the Born approximation will work? So the Born approximation, as we have, as we discussed, is going to work in the regime where the energy is much larger than the the potential. Fine. Okay. So I've taken two limits. Okay. So physically, we'll look at whether it, uh, one of the limit will be valid or it's not valid. So that's what I'm just wanted to check it. So which limit is actually valid? Which limit is not valid? The energy is not valid. Okay. Okay, that is true. So we are not actually worried about this. Even though I just took the approximation, I'm not going to worry about it. 
So we are going to worry about the d sigma by d omega. Okay. So I am worried. I am not interested in any other factor. So it will be v naught squared. So let us put it as constants r squared by q to the power of four. Okay. So the first thing which we actually notice is that it is independent of theta. Okay. So it is independent of theta. Okay, and uh, it goes as one by q to the power of four, so it's inversely proportional to momentum transfer. Yeah. Q is actually a number. Q is a, uh, is Q is K minus K prime. We don't really know, but we know K is almost approximately equal to K prime. Okay, let us come back to this. Okay, let us come back to this. So it is inversely proportional to the momentum transfer, and uh, of course it should be naturally be proportional to V zero. So larger the V zero is, so you should have. D sigma by D omega should be large. Okay, is there anything else which we actually infer? Now, okay, the other thing is since it's proportional to V naught squared, so it is the same for the repulsive as well as for attractive potentials. Okay, so it is the same. Fine. Anything else which we actually understand? So Q is mod of K minus K prime. Okay. So what will this be equal to? So this will be like mod k squared k prime squared does this make sense or does it make sense yes so i can approximate k and k prime to be the same so i'll have a 2 mod k minus 2 mod k cos theta there fine okay. Huh? K and K prime are approximately equal to same. Yeah, two should be inside. Yes. Two is outside. This is what we will actually get. Okay, so this will be like mod Q squared. So mod Q will be. Uh, this is approximately at some point. So what will this be? One minus cos theta is some sine square theta by two. Right? Two, two, two. Yes. Okay. So there is a Q. The Q is. Fine. Okay. So now, let us ask the following question. So we are going to look at scattering. Okay. So so people were people are excited. So let us just do this. 
So we are having a scatterer here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I am just going to do that, that is exactly what I am going to do, okay. So I, I, I made a jump, so that is where I immediately said, okay, I will put a question mark to it, okay. So what we are actually going to look at, so this is a spherical potential, so the theta is basically corresponding to with respect to the polar angle theta, right, correct, okay. So now what we are actually going to look for is theta is whatever written down everything is in the polar coordinates right. So what we are going to look for is basically okay so what we are going to have is most of the most of the scattering is going to be along this direction you will not get any any scattering anywhere around it that is basically so you will have a bubble like a most of it along this direction okay. So k is along this direction k is along this direction k prime is along direction so theta is okay so okay. So when I said, uh, I correct it, so when I said it was basically theta independent, basically I had already had this thing that it is almost going to be very close to this, so that is the reason why I said, okay. So you will have a theta independent, but it is actually going to be very, very small, it is very large, it is it's theta, it's so I agree, so it will be, it goes as 1 over q, so it is going to be very large, so you will have a d sigma by d omega only peaked around that direction. Most of the scattering is yes. That is basically, so I actually told him I will derive it, so that is basically, so I, I basically made a lot of jump, which I will wait for a minute, okay. So let us do the Q, so what I will get is, so you will get something like this, so you will have a 1 by Q to the power of 4, okay. So 1 by Q to the power of 4 is some sign to the power of 4 theta by 2, forget about the K, so K is basically K to the power of 4, fine. Now this is D sigma by D omega. So what I am going to get is when the theta is very small, I will going to get everything is going to be close to theta, it is going to be 0, okay. And what I will get is this will be a large value, so d sigma by d omega is very, very large for theta almost equal to 0, okay. So everything whatever you are going to see is always going to be forward scattered. Okay, so now I want to do the same calculation but slightly different potential. So this is case 1, this is, I am going to do a case 2. Okay, uh, so this is again very localized because I have an exponentially decaying function, fine, okay. So I want you to calculate F1Q, so what I have from F of Get anything close to this? So d sigma by d omega is the square of it, not square of it. So let me just write down the expression, see whether this is. So now I am going to take a limit which is actually be, which will give you some interesting result. So take the limit v0 going to 0 and uh, mu0 going to 0 such that v0 by mu is a constant. People who have done uh, solid constant of physics 1, so you have a lattice of length L, we are going to keep n fixed, L fixed 
but we are going to have lattice size A such that A goes to 0 and N tends to infinity such that L is equal to A times N okay. So this is always what condensed matter people always use okay. So A goes to infinity but N go, A goes to 0, N goes to infinity such that but L is always fixed okay. So we are going to take such a limit where V0 goes to 0, mu also goes to 0 okay but V0 by N mu will always be a some number okay so a constant okay okay I will fix the constant in a minute I wanted to get it to something more physical. So what you get finally Okay, so now let me fix okay so this will come out to be a constant like this but I want to fix this constant then you will understand what I wanted to do. So I said <coughs> if I fix this to be like this Does it have any resemblance? This is the Rutherford scattering actually. Okay, yeah, the Coulomb potential. Just a minute, I'm just. Ah, yeah, yes, yes, correct. Thanks. This is key to power four. Yeah, that's. I have got so this is actually a valid okay so I wanted few things to be said. So this expression is a very localized potential okay so this expression what we have got is actually correct okay because it is a localized and we have got it. Now we are actually asking a question whether we can actually stretch it a bit more and see whether when can we get anything close to what we have got before okay and that is the reason why I have actually used this. So we are we are tending to v going to 0 and mu going to 0 this is absolutely may not be correct but mathematically imprecise but we can always do this. What it, what, what it basically tells you that this exactly gives you the classical Rutherford scattering which we actually calculated which you have done, you should, if you have done classical mechanics you should have got this. H cross squared should not be there yes except that everything else is the same. <laughs> yeah I was expecting no H cross into this thing will actually be a P so it should be fine okay yeah that I will fix it. Okay. Now, okay. So there are a few things which I wanted to mention. For this is a very this is a classical result. So the first Born approximation is will give you classical results. Now, if you go higher and higher order then you will always get quantum corrections which is what is relevant. So it is very similar to what we did in the case of perturbation theory if you remember the first order perturbation will give you something corrections to this then we had summation over k prime or uh, I do not know what I did. So you will have uh, it will take intermediate energy levels. Okay, so these are precisely pure quantum effects. So the first Born approximation is very similar to what we did in the case of first order perturbation or the zero the first order perturbation, and what we will get extra higher and higher order Born approximations will give you really quantum effects, which we will not do right now, but we will do it next week. Okay. <coughs> 